I just arrived in Calafate. Welcome to the new episode. And now I'm going to uh, El Chaten, it's my first destination. Uh, it's now two o'clock and I actually had to wait until six o'clock until uh, the next bus uh, goes. But I found this awesome passenger, which offers me to, uh, to ride along with him. So, because he's renting a car. So, that saves a lot of time. Patagonia, the very south of South America. Me, living in a pretty dense country like the Netherlands, or the continent Europe for that matter, I felt like I was entering a very remote place because of the large distances of nothingness. Everything looked so deserted, just a single river or road with nothing around it. I flew from Buenos Aires to Calafate, the perfect location to get from here to El Chaten. Usually by bus from the town Calafate, but I got lucky and hitchhiked to El Chaten. And that was actually the best choice, because a bus doesn't stop and you won't have such a nice view unless you are sitting in the front seat. It was such a nice welcome to El Chaten. It is already breathtaking actually every time when we are driving, but look at where we are now, this awesome lake. Hitchhiking is obviously also a good way to connect with other people and perhaps do things together later. Hitchhiking in Patagonia is really common by the way. So arriving here yesterday was already amazing, the scenery was beautiful and today we're gonna start the first hike. Um, the weather forecast though looks pretty bad actually for the entire week. Today it's expected to be sunny up until like 12 o'clock and then it's going to rain. I'm gonna do a 9 kilometers uh, hike, so I'll show on the map which one it is. I went to El Chaten because some were saying it's the most beautiful place to do hikes. From this town there are a lot of different hikes you can do. You can also do a multi-day hike and sleep on campsites in between in the national park. The campsites are very basic, just a toilet, they are free and thus you have to carry your own food for the days you want to hike. This is entirely the opposite of Torres del Paine where I will go to in the next episode. So just so you know, if you want to hike cheap and camp for free, this is the place to be. If you don't have your own camping gear with you, you can also rent this in the town. For just 8000 pesos you can rent a 2 person tent with sleeping bags and mattresses. For an additional 1000 pesos you can also have a cooking set plus a stove. So the goal is actually to go all the way to Laguna Torre. Which is all the way, we are here, so we have to walk all this way to this lake, that's where we are going for. I was actually planning to do Fitzroy today, camp at a campsite and go back tomorrow. So I prepped everything, my whole bigger backpack was packed with a lot of food and some more clothes. But unfortunately the person I was going with became sick. So that's why I'm doing this hike on my own today. And maybe tomorrow there's another chance to do it. 
just reached a sign that I uh, just did four kilometers already of the nine in total and well it's just a panoramic view if you stand here you can like watch in every direction you have mountains surrounding you uh, the wind is also a little bit calmer but there are a few drops of rain, rain every time so I'm like do I have to put on my rain jacket and then you see the sun coming again so <laughs> uh, uh, it's still actually a nice temperature for for walking I mean it's about 15 degrees I think 17 maybe uh, so you don't get all too sweaty and you don't get all too cold either in a t-shirt so up to now it's quite good Moments later. <laughs> Alright, so it took me three hours to complete the hike to it. It was very windy up there, as you can see. Oh man, I couldn't see when I was watching in the direction. I couldn't even like get a sip of my drink. Eating a banana was actually very complicated. Uh, so I actually didn't spend that long here. So I've made it back. I enjoyed the hike, but the wind was like very extreme. It's still very extreme. So now I'm going back to town. I'm going to pick up the laundry I dropped off yesterday. I'm going to eat something, prep food again for tomorrow. And I'm going to see what I'm going to do tomorrow. See if my uh, person who wants to uh, do the hike together is back alive again. Unfortunately the camping plans didn't succeed, mainly during the weather as well. Camping wouldn't be fun with the amount of rain in the afternoon. So I had to come up with a different strategy to see the famous Fitzroy on my own. So yesterday when I arrived it started raining a lot. And so today I decided to wake up at 3am, it's about 3.30 almost, and I'm about to start the Fitzroy trial. So yeah, it's quite an early hike. It's four hours, but I already see a group in front of me. So maybe they do the same hike and I can join them so that I don't have to walk alone. It's gonna be very dark though, of course, at the beginning. So I won't be doing a lot of filming, but we are doing a hike this day. And we're trying to make it uh, back before the rain. <laughs> It's the last hour of our hike to the top. It's now really a beautiful sunrise behind us. Oh, it's astonishing. The night walk up until now is kind of going very fast. I have these two Korean people which are going like crazy. They're old but they're going very fast. <laughs> so uh, that uh, is a really good pace to, uh, to get here. So uh, yeah, we are about to uh, get into the hardest part actually of the hike. It's really hard, but the view keeps getting better and better. 
the sun is almost coming above the mountain. You can now see the valley we've walked in, the rivers, the other lagoons. So it's really tough, but really amazing. I think this hike is really, really amazing. I can't say it's the best, of course, because I didn't do all the hikes in Shaltan. In the coming days, there's going to be a lot of rain, so I think this is going to be the last one as well. Um, but yeah, really awesome. You should really do this one. Now the path is quite obvious, there are a lot of signs and usually the route is very straightforward where you have to go to. But during the night it was a little bit more uh, difficult. So I used the uh, app All Trails, actually it just started like the trial and I'm maybe keeping it because it was very welcoming. It happened, it happened like four times or something that I was like, hmm, where do I go now? It was either a very broad place or there were just a lot of small paths you can take so that's why uh, that's why i used the app and it was actually quite nice so if you do some trails at night might be recommended to download this app and use it we made it back at the starting location high five i have a good time yeah yeah, yeah we had a good time Good job, <laughs> we did it, very thank nice. Thank you for your kindness. Yeah, yeah, thank you. More hikes was due the weather not possible. So the next day I took the bus back to El Calafate. El Calafate is another little town. Due that it has an airport, it's a bit bigger than El Chaten. Look out with where you are staying in terms of payment. I stayed with America del Sur Hostel. Looks great, but they only accept paying via Hostel World in dollars. So no blue dollar rate advantage there. Prices were quite high as well due to not booking in advance. El Calafate is famous for its glacier tour, which I booked via the hostel because I could pay that in cash, and therefore I didn't have to book and pay online, so that I can use the blue dollar rate again. I did the mini trekking tour. These prices have already jumped quite a bit since I visited. A bit jealous on this, but we have a nice view here. now in the National Glacier Park and it took quite a while I mean I got picked up at 9 o'clock and it's now 11.30 while we are here uh, but she explained along the way uh, about animals that we have seen on the road and that live around here um, and she also explained a lot about the park uh, we have now two hours here to walk around free time and just admire the glacier from a distance thereafter we're going on a boat so looking forward to that as well Ja, 
Yeah, it's truly some magnificent views here. Really amazing. Sometimes you see the ice breaking and falling into the water. Of course, you won't capture it on camera when it happens, but uh, you can see it there. You kind of see like a whole splash in the water where it happened. So that's really nice to to feel also because you hear the sounds quite loud and you kind of feel the nature is working with it. What what she also explained is that. Uh, when the ice reaches like the land it forms like a natural dam but because of the water pressure behind it it creates like a hole uh, on the bottom and th this hole actually like becomes bigger and bigger and actually there is like a magical moment when this hole collapses so yeah that's really what uh, the people are craving for to see last time was four years ago and it happened in the night <laughs> so nobody saw it but I've seen some pictures she was showing, so that looked quite nice. Give an applause for you. You do. You are doing. For you. Do really great. Yes. Congrats. You an too. applause for you. Your English is getting better and better every day. Better and better. <laughs> so this hike was really nice. It was the mini trekking. You can even do like the big ice, which is even bigger and longer. But I think the mini trekking was enough. It was just like touching the edges of it. It's not really like a very physical, difficult hike or whatever. So, yeah, I think that's good. Um, I would definitely recommend doing it. It was quite expensive, but I think it's worth it. And of course, you get some free whiskey. So, that's always something to go for. Well, free. You pay for it, of course. But hey, you could like drink the whole bottle, I think, if you wanted to. <laughs> I finished this episode off with a free festival in El Calafate. They even had the famous Argentina DJ Bizrap. Oh.